Johnny, what got you into coaching? Well, when I was a kid, I was always a captain of the team. And my coach, uh, Dol Stanley, is a great coach, Ray Elliott and Doug Mills, and they all told me I was going to be a good coach, and that's what I should do. They said I was a good leader of men, so I, <laughs> I couldn't do anything else, I guess, so I went into coaching. Your own playing career, who molded you into who you are today? Well, I think Dol Stanley, my coach in high school and also most of my college career, had more to do it with me than anything else. Ray Elliott had a great deal, the football coach at Illinois, and, and Doug Mills, too. The, those were the guys I played for that I really respected, and, and uh, they taught me more than basketball. They taught me more about life than anything else. How do you reflect upon your first coaching job? Oh, I was just a young guy. And I was enthusiastic, man. Uh, had a bunch of technicals and everything, but I went to Milton, Wisconsin, and I was excited about the job, the fact that I got paid first time. <laughs> and uh, got paid for doing something I really enjoyed. And I uh, had a good team, took them to the state tournament first time in history, and it was exciting. You had great success at Michigan. What got you to Michigan? Well, I uh, bumped into Dave Strack when he was a head coach at Michigan, and I was assistant at Wisconsin. And uh, I'd gotten out of coaching a year, and he was looking for a coach. And uh, I bumped into him. He says he's looking for an assistant. I told him I traveled all around Illinois, I'd find him a guy. And he said, well, no hurry, wait till the season's over. When the season ended, he called me, and you know, I usually don't call you back. He called me back, he says, you found a guy. I says, I found you the best one I know. He said, who is it? And he said, I said, it's me. He said, would you come up here? And I said, sure. If Fritz Chrysler, who was the AD, paid me enough money to make a living. So I went to Michigan, and Fritz paid me enough. And after one year, Fritz retired, and uh, Cannon became the AD, and made Strack his business manager, and made me the head coach. What were your thoughts at that point in time? Did you think maybe you were in over your head, or you thought you could really succeed there? <laughs> I was fired up, man, to get that job. I thought that was terrific. Didn't pay me much, you know. <laughs> Canham asked me what I was worth. I said, well, I don't know, 18000 20000 Ooh, that's too high. Paid me fifteen five. But uh, he was a great guy to work for, and I enjoyed my time there. I was there 13 years. John, in 1976, you finished as the national runner-up to Bob Knight, who was a good friend of yours. Yeah. What were your thoughts at that point in time, and was that your greatest team in your history? Well, that was the greatest team I had that the next year. Uh, I would have had a great team in 1975. We'd won the Big Ten Championship in 74, and uh, Campy Russell uh, declared hardship and went to NBA. And then uh, we would have done it again, and uh, Phil Hubbard declared hardship and went in the NBA. And I, I had two chances, I think, uh, possibilities to win a national championship. But 1976, was that your greatest moment? Oh, I think uh, it's the most exciting going to the Final Four and playing in the national championship game. It was a great thrill, and it was a thrill I'd, I'd like to see every coach get the opportunity to do that. What were your thoughts when you left Michigan? Oh, I had a good time there. I thought I'd done a good job, and I thought they appreciated the job I'd done for them, and I was ready for a change. I was, uh, wanted a challenge and see if I could build another program. And I saw the facilities at Iowa State, and uh, they, they treated me tremendously. And so I decided to take a shot at it. You got to help Bob Knight with the Olympic trials, but you've never coached an Olympic team. Give us your thoughts about that. How did you enjoy that? Uh, do you aspire to be an Olympic coach someday? Oh, I don't think so. I, I was with him for a week. I was with him from 9 in the morning till 9 at night for a week. <laughs> I felt sorry for Knight and Donna Her and Raveling and C.M. Newton they had to be with those guys that long, man. That was long enough for me. They were good kids and everything, but woo, that was a long time to be with them. Johnny Orr, with 300 career wins a year or so ago, how important was that to you? Oh, that wasn't that important to me. It's a nice thing to say, I guess. That doesn't really mean that much to me, Mark. It just means I've been in it a long time. I think I'd have had a lot more wins than that if I'd have had jobs at basketball schools. I've never had a job. I was at Wisconsin and I was in Massachusetts. When I went into Michigan, the program was down. And when I came to Iowa State, the program was down. And I think for the way the programs were, I think I've won a lot of games. You were National Coach of the Year 
that had to mean a lot. Well, that was a nice thing. That was very nice. I, I thought I should have had it in a different year that I got it. <laughs> but that was okay. When you get it, it's a great thing. And the nice thing about it, other great coaches have gotten it. And I see my name up there with them. That makes you feel good. All the teams, all the players. Who are your favorite players? Oh, I got so many of them. Take too long to, too long to talk about them all. Name a few. Well, Rudy Tomjanovich was one. Campy Russell. I think uh, Wayman Britt, Steve Grody, of course Ricky Green and John Robinson, Phil Hubbard. Those were all great, uh, great players. I hate to miss anybody because there's some others in there too. I really like Michael McGee. He was different, but he was good. And then I came here and. Well, I had Ronnie Harris and Terrence Allen who came with me. We had nothing. And then, uh, of course, Barry Stevens and Jeff Hornacek and Jeff Grayer now. The way Shavers worked. Gary Tompkins. I, I, I've got a lot of favorite guys. Most of the guys that I like were guys who played above their abilities and put out and really were dedicated. Obviously, they played above their abilities because of Johnny Orr. What do you do that's so special to get so much out of a young man? I don't think I do anything. Just uh, treat them fairly. I try to treat them fairly and uh, I count on them having a little pride. If they've got the pride, then they'll play well. What are Johnny Orr's hopes and dreams deep down inside? It's hopes and dreams that people may not realize. Well, I don't think I have anything like that. Uh, Mark, I don't have any great fantasies or dream or anything like that. I want to be healthy as long as I can be healthy. And I want to coach as long as I'm healthy and feel good. You once made a statement, John, that this is a hell of a job if it wasn't for the damn games. <laughs> if you got a bad team, your team's not playing well, that's right. When you're playing well, ooh, you look forward to the games. Right now, I haven't been looking forward to too many of the games. What do you dislike about coaching? Well, I don't think I have any real dislike. Officials, maybe. Uh, the most frustrating thing of coaching is officials. Recruiting is a tough job and interference from outside forces into the basketball business. I think if the uh, NCAA and college presidents would let the basketball coaches handle the problems, tell them what the problems are and, and let us solve the problems and pay attention to us, we get rid of them. John, reflecting back to when you started coaching, since that time there have been a number of rules changes. Since that time, basketball on the collegiate level has become a big business. Uh, since that time, there have been things like Proposition 48, reductions in scholarships. There have been uh, investigations and all this. If you knew all of this when you started, would you still want to be where you are today? I doubt seriously if I'd do it. No, because uh, every one of these rules uh, have been made by people who don't know what they're talking about. They're not familiar with the situation. They're not thinking one single bit about the student athlete. None of these rules have been made are for the student athlete, and they're not for the coaches either. And uh, no, if I knew it was going to be like that, uh, and I was starting out in it now, I think I'd choose something else. If Johnny Orr could change anything, any of the rules, what would Johnny Orr change? Which, which big on your priority list? Oh, the, the scholarships. I would never take the scholarships away, uh, cut it down to 13. I think that's ridiculous, and I'll tell you what, Men's basketball provides 36 million of the NCAA's 40 million dollar budget. And if I was an NCAA guy or college guys, I'd do everything in the world to make college men's basketball coaches happy. Johnny, as a father, you've had all daughters, no sons. Had you ever wanted to have a son that could oh. be a basketball player? No, just so the healthy mark. I've never, I've never thought about that. Basketball coaching on the collegiate level takes a lot of time away from your family. Any regrets? Oh, no, it's just uh, that's part of the job. And uh, you got to get used to that, Mark. That's, uh, you got you to gotta spend your job time at your job, and you do that in any job you're in. You're very fortunate to have a very loving wife who is perhaps Johnny Orr's greatest fan. Yeah, she's a real fan. No question about that. How, how's it gone over the years, John, as you look back, you and Rami together? Have you shared uh, your success? Uh, have you grieved together when you lose a close one? Does she help you recruit? What role does Rami play in your life? Oh, well, a lot of things there. I mean, so many things, you know, involved. Oof, a lot of things. Ahead at Iowa State. What's your goals now? I mean, here you are, uh, 
Been here seven years now. What, what's ahead for Johnny Orr? Well, I want to win the uh, Big A championship for him out of this thing. I'd like to get back in that NCAA again. That was exciting. Uh, the goal is certainly to keep basketball here at Iowa State uh, and the fans as enthusiastic as they've been. Is Johnny Orr going to win that Big Eight in the near future? I hope so. It's getting harder, though. Uh, getting good coaches and doing great jobs. And I think basketball in the Big Eight is getting better and better every year. You ever get tired, exhausted in this business, John? Oh, sure you do. Everybody does. I think every coach comes a time when he wants to get out, you know, and then you get over it. You get a victory or you get a good recruit. Or something good happens to you and bam, you're back in there again. A lot, of great bu a, lot of, a lot of great people in this business out there. Oh, boy. Yeah, I was out one year, and I missed the, I missed the people, uh, you know, connected with the uh, job more than anything else. If Johnny Orr had to name a name right now of another man in your profession that you look up to and idolize, who does Johnny Orr revere? Oh, I think I revere Dahl Stanley, who was my coach. And uh, it's won almost a thousand games, and uh, I think Dawes Stanley uh, taught me so much more than basketball. All right, modern day Division One coach. Who does Johnny Orr look up to? Oh, I look up to a lot of guys. I I look up to anyone that's had a successful program. Uh, Mark, I, Dean Smith, uh, Bobby Knight, been in the same places done it so many times and of course John Wooden I, I think any basketball coach looked up to John Wooden he how he did that so many times is unreal as Johnny Orr ages and mellows with age does the job get tougher well, I don't think I get any mellower <laughs> I just get older but uh, oh I don't know it depends on whether you're winning or losing if you're losing whew, man it's a long if you're winning then it's fun and it's tougher every year to find a winning combination, isn't it? Well, it is, and uh, I think the athletes have changed tremendously. John, knowing some of the ramifications and some of the allegations that uh, there's cheating going on, and Bob Knight expounds upon this, and I don't want you to get on a soapbox to do it, but do you think college athletics is maybe sliding a little bit, maybe taking a step in the wrong direction with all this that you hear about? That, Young men sometimes were bought here and so forth. What are your thoughts on that? No, I don't think it's sliding in the wrong direction. I don't like to hear those things. A lot of them are unfounded, and they get in the papers, and a lot of them are true, I'm sure. But uh, like I said, if they just let the coaches handle the problems and give them the power to do it, we get that straightened out. Big 8 basketball, you've said for years it doesn't get the respect it deserves. Highly underrated because of our location and the few number of people we have in where our conference is. Uh, just every bit as good, I think, as the Big Ten. Anything out east when I was out there, uh, other conferences I've seen, I don't think there's any difference. That's good. Gentlemen, change tapes for the one-on-one. -on -one.
here in, in its entirety of the state of Iowa has great people, and that's what I was looking for, someone to tell me a point's eye view of his feelings about it. And uh, John Cooper is an Iowa State graduate, and he told me the same thing, and uh, so I kind of let it dry, die at that. And uh, I've talked to several other people in random, but that's the two people I referred to. Well, I stand on being loyal to my assistants to a, to a man. They've helped me do what got me here. If, you're in, if the people wanted Jim Walden to come and coach at this school, it's because something he's been doing uh, impressed them. And I'm one of those kind of people that believe that my people who've been working with me should have the right to enjoy the fruits of this labor. They're good enough to coach with me at Washington State. They'll be good enough to coach with me at Iowa State. And so they've all been offered an opportunity. Uh, as I met with the young the coaches here this morning, I wanted to compliment them, and it was a, a, a special treat for me to sit in a room with those who have not been offered jobs and already have accepted some, and compliment them on the job they did here a year ago. Well, I don't know if sometimes you don't understand that winning six and seven football games in a season is not not easy. And these people came in and some of them had only been here one year and did a great job. And I want to tell you that it's a compliment to them. The bottom line is, though, that a man in my position has to be loyal to one group, and the group he has to be most loyal to is the ones who've been helping him get it done. So my first priority is to find out how many of my guys will want to come. They have all been offered an opportunity to come and coach and do well for Iowa State. I don't know how many of them will take it, but it's a stressful time. We have two coaches who have youngsters going into their senior year, and that's a stressful time, and I'm giving them some time to make some decisions without saying, okay, tell me today. And uh, so they will be given, I think, a two week to, to after the convention or during the convention to let me know what they do. Uh, I, I don't, I think loyalty is a, is a one way street, me to them. I expect them to work. If they don't work, I fire them. But I'm the loyal guy. They can't fire me. I can fire them. But I'm loyal to them because I think that's the way it should be. And my loyalty transfers into the fact that I'm not leaving people who I know have done so much for me as a coach. Besides that, there's something I want you to know. I intend to get out in this state and do some big time stuff, okay? I mean, I'm gonna be on the move, just like I've always been on the move. And when I'm gone, I don't want, I literally say, I don't want nothing being done while I'm gone. And I know one thing about it, the guys I got, they work hard. The only time they slough off is when I'm back. And uh, so I mean that sincerely. It's important for me to do what I've got to do for Iowa State University, some of it and a lot of it is away from this campus. But what's most important is the coaches and the players are getting something done while they're here. So that's why I tell you that I will probably deal strongly with my assistants. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll help this bunch that's here get a job if I possibly can. And they will have my second consideration. I told them that this morning. The guys that are calling in that I don't know are sitting in a third spot to the people who are here. If anybody on this, this staff that I think would blend well with mine and one of my guys doesn't come, I will add him before I go out and ha hire someone I don't know. Jim, how do you compare football with Big Eight or Pac-10? Well, I don't know. Um, I think they have a physical approach right here. Just what I say, I haven't had enough time to watch the film and know. I used to coach at Nebraska, and at that time we thought, we compared it to nothing because we thought we were the fat cats of America and we were pretty good there and uh, until we came over here there in 72 and then we found out we weren't that good. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think football is football. You just got, I got to wait and see. I'm going to reserve the right to find out that probably firsthand. I